In this lesson, we're going to be talking about SERDs. Uh, more specifically, what are they and how can we deal with them? All right, so first up, a SERD is an irrational number uh, and its value can only be expressed accurately using the square root symbol. Now, when we say it can only be expressed accurately, we mean that you can write out a SERD as it's rounded to 5, 10, 100 decimal places, but that is never going to be as accurate as writing the SERD as a square root sign. Let's start with an example. Square root of 16. Now, the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So, according to our definition that its exact value can only be expressed as the SERD form, this is not a SERD. Its exact value can be expressed as a whole number. But if we take another one, say for example the square root of 2, this has a one point something answer. And that decimal goes on forever and ever. So that is what we mean by a SERD. The best, shortest, easiest way of writing it is leaving it as the square root of 2. All right. The first thing we need to be able to do is simplify SERDs. In the little red box there, we have a couple of definitions. Basically, if you have the square root of a number and then you square it, or if you have a number, you square it, and then you square root that number, those operations are the opposite of each other, much like if you add 2 on a number and then take away 2, you're left with that number you started with. If you multiply a number by 7 and then divide it by 7, you're left with the number you started with. So over here, we have our first definition saying that timesing a number by itself and square rooting it are the opposite operation, and they will always give you the number you started with in the first place. The other third definition that we need to be able to use is the fact that if you have one number multiplied by another number under the third sign, you can split those up. All right, for our first example, we're going to try and simplify the square root of 7 squared. Now, according to our definition here, it applies to our first one. And if you square root a number and square it, nothing happens essentially, and you're left with the number that you started with. Okay, our next example here is the square root of 50. How do we deal with the square root of 50? It's not being squared at the same time, so we cannot cancel it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make good use of this little rule here. Now, I recommend whenever doing surge simplification, you write down the side of your page all the perfect squares. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and we keep going until we get to about 10 squared. So we're up to 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, and 10 squared. These are going to help us solve the simplification. Basically, we're going to try and split this number, this 50, into two numbers multiplied together. So what are two factors of 50? Now we can say 10 and 5 and put those in and start simplifying, but that's not going to get us anywhere. What we need to do is we need to pick one of the numbers over here that is a factor of 50. And I'll show you why in just a sec. So I can see that 25 is a factor of 50. So I'm going to put 25 in there and I need to double 25 to turn it into 50. Now, using our little rule up the top, it says that if we have two numbers multiplied together under a third sign, we can separate them out. And we can have the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of 2. Now, this is the whole reason why I wanted to pick a number that was over here on the right. Because square root of 25 is not a third anymore. There is another way we can write that number in its most exact form. And that is as 5. Times remains a times, and the square root of 2, that's the best way of writing that number, so we leave it as a square root of 2. In our answer, we clean it up a little bit. Mathematicians are extremely lazy, and if we don't need to write a symbol, we won't. So they decided that the multiplication symbol is one that we can assume when we write two numbers next to each other. So instead of having the square root of 50, the basic definition of simplifying a third is that you want to minimise the number underneath the square root sign. And we've done that. We've turned a 50 into a 2, all by putting just a 5 out the front. 
Okay, a couple of more difficult examples. What if we need to simplify a third and there's already a number out the front? The steps remain the same. We just need to make sure we take into account that number out the front. So we have a 4 out the front, and I'm going to write in brackets the square root of 12. So nothing's changed. There is a little multiplication sign in there, and there is a little multiplication sign in there, and I still have all the numbers that I started with. So I haven't changed anything just yet. All right, next line. The 4 stays out the brackets. We're going to try and simplify the third inside the brackets this time. What we need up the side again, we're simplifying thirds, so we need to have all those numbers again. I'm only going to go to 25. We're trying to simplify 12, and clearly 16 and 25 are not going to be factors of 12. So what number over on the side here is a factor of 12? There it is. 4 is a factor. So I'm going to split this up and say that instead of 12 under the square root sign, I'm going to have 4 times 3. Using that little rule, I'm going to split both of those thirds up. Instead of the square root of 4 times 3, I'm going to have the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Finish that off there. Now, the square root of 4, that's no longer a third. I can write that as a 2. And the square root of 3 remains a square root of 3. Now, the way this question becomes more difficult is I need to take into account that there was the 4 out the front. The easiest way of dealing with that is just remembering that whole numbers multiplied by whole numbers make this step a lot easier. So 4 times 2 gives me the 8 times the square root of 3. And we can clean our answer up by writing 8 times the square root of 3 without the multiplication sign. Now notice... This doesn't mean the 8th root of 3, it means 8 times the square root of 3. Okay, one more difficult example. Instead of multiplication, this time we're going to have division. Alright, we're going to deal with it in the same way. In the brackets, we're going to have the third that we started with. And outside those brackets, we're going to write the other operation we need to do. So we need to divide by 3 after we've simplified this third. Okay, the square root of 288. Open those brackets up, open the third. I can see that the biggest factor of that one is going to be 144 times by 2. Now I pick 144 because when I split that up, so now it's the square root of 144 times the square root of 2. That still remains in the brackets. I still have to divide by 3. I'm not changing anything. The 144 is no longer a third. The most accurate way to write that is as a 12 times the square root of 2, and I still have to divide by 3. Now, because the 3 is a whole number and the 12 is a whole number, I'm going to join both of those together, which means I need a 12 divide 3 times the square root of 2, so I have 4 root 2 as my final answer. Okay, so there's all the ways that you're going to be asked to simplify a third. I hope you enjoyed this video, and good luck.